So the, the main reason for, for stopping it at this particular spot was to show the diversity that exists within a particular genus and also the value of, of these species. So there's, there's actually three species of Aerogrostis here that have basically colonised this particular spot in the last few months since the summer rainfall. This particular spot has been devoid of, um, of grass other than the odd Kulatai grass plant um, for as long as I've been here. So the capacity for these grasses to actually um, come in and colonise and, and establish on what is fairly desperate soil is, is quite phenomenal. So, so what we've got here are three um, examples of relatively short-lived perennial native grasses. Uh, this one here, so Aerogrostis parviflora is often I think mistaken for African lovegrass because it, it has got such a, a wide open panicle but um, there are some distinct differences between it and, and the African lovegrass of course but it's a very, very fine inflorescence on this particular plant, but produces um, quite desirable, palatable uh, foliage as it, as it grows. The one here, the, the purple coloured one, is Aerogrostis brownii, or Brown's lovegrass. Unlike Aerogrostis parviflora, which has got a, an open panicle as an inflorescence, Aerogrostis brownii has got a much more contracted panicle so quite different looking plants when you look at them side by side, but if you were to look at the uh, arrangement of the florets within the, each of the spikelets, the arrangement of the florets puts them in the same genus. Um, and then at the other extreme, we've got the contracted panicle of Aerogrostis elongatus, which is clustered lovegrass. It's quite different to most of the others in, um, in that it has a really really strongly contracted panicle. Even though they're, they're quite small branches, the key feature of the love grasses of Aerogrostis species is the arrangement of the, each of the florets within the spikelet, which is quite significant and, and similar amongst all the members of that particular genus. The clustered love grass, again, doesn't produce a vast volume of, of leaf material, but it has a, a significant role. It's actually quite fine, the, the leaf. I'm not even sure of its grazing value. I've not seen, again, so much of, of it in a particular area, but it's only really come up on the, on the really poor quality soil. Love grasses, Aerogrostis species, considered to be relatively early colonising species or early successional species that are doing the perfect job providing an enormous amount of increase in uh, ground cover and actually putting this particular spot on its way to regeneration.